Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. President Trump wrapped up day two of his UK trip talking trade and Brexit. I'm Wendy Gillette with more on that and how the Commander in Chief will commemorate the 75th anniversary of D Day. I'm Cody Boyer at a very angry Galvin River where last night a river rescue may have saved the lives of a woman and two others. Good morning to you and welcome to your Wednesday. I'm Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman coming up on exactly 6.30 here. Our top story for you now. Day two of President Trump's visit to the UK was a little less ceremonial, more down to business. He met with the Prime Minister to discuss, among other things, trade and Brexit. And as Wendy Gillette reports, the President was also greeted by thousands of protesters. President Trump's second day in the UK ended at the residence of the US Ambassador. The President and First Lady hosted a dinner for Prince Charles, his wife Camilla, and other London notables. You are a tremendous professional and a person that loves your country dearly. Thank you very much. Earlier in the day, Mr. Trump met with outgoing British Prime Minister Theresa May. May is leaving her post Friday after failing to get her Brexit plan through Parliament. And I seem to remember the, the President suggested that I sued the European Union, which uh, we didn't do. We I would have sued, but that's okay. <laughs> I would have sued and settled, maybe, but you never know. The president told May the U.S. will support the U.K. after it leaves the EU. The two leaders said they've been working on a comprehensive post-Brexit free trade agreement. Mr. Trump seemed untroubled by the thousands of demonstrators who turned out in downtown London. I heard that there were protests. I said, where are the protests? I don't see any protests. I did see a small protest today when I came, very small. So a lot of it is fake news, I hate to say. Today, the president will attend a 75th anniversary D-Day event before traveling on to Ireland. Wendy Gillette, CBS News. Uh, also, while in Ireland, President uh, Trump will meet briefly uh, with that country's prime minister before heading uh, to his golf course in Dunbeg, County Clare. Matt joins us now. Speaking of golf, what a nice day it was for that yesterday. Today, kind of yeah, tee off, man. Yeah. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> yeah, before you get teed off later, yeah, yeah, you're going to be a little teed yeah. off on Friday. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We knew that was coming, right? <laughs> uh, temperatures holding into the 30s and 40s, uh, mainly pretty quiet conditions for the early morning. We did have a few showers out toward Yellowstone National Park, West Yellowstone uh, early this morning. Temperatures should be into the mid 70s, even some 80s sprinkled in there. Man, Butte has a beautiful shot there. Temperatures are going to continue to climb through the afternoon. We'll talk about that little change up in our weather pattern coming up in just a few minutes. We'll be chatting a little bit more about Butte with our live guest here Absolutely. in just a little bit. Six, 632 now, there was a big police presence yesterday at Belgrade High School. School went into shelter in place mode after a threatening video was posted on social media. Now, according to an official news release, Belgrade School District contacted Belgrade Police around 1 o'clock Tuesday afternoon saying several students had made the video, which spread on social media. Gallon County Sheriff's deputies, Montana Highway Patrol, Bozeman City Police officers all worked together alongside Belgrade Police to make sure everyone was safe. Uh, we can also confirm the students believed to be involved in producing the video were caught. Belgrade Police Chief says the school district reported the threat promptly, which he praised. Superintendent Godfrey Saunders says this is an example of how serious all threats are taken and warns students to keep that in mind they're thinking about their actions. In other news, three people rafting on the Gallatin River on Monday night quickly found themselves in a life or death situation. Gallatin County search and rescue crews responded to the scene. MTN's Cody Boyer has the story and how it could have ended much worse. Severe hypothermia. I don't know how much longer she'd have lasted on that. On angry waters like the Gallatin River this time of year, everything can change in an instant. Search and Rescue Commander Jason Jarrett says that's exactly what happened Monday night. This particular call was of a small person yelling for help that was trapped on a cut bank on the Gallatin. It was a woman trapped and freezing. She was stranded along the bank in really cold weather, had been there for a while. She was alone, but the commander says she wasn't when this all started. She and two others, which we didn't find out till later, had dumped their two rafts in a kayak. Trying to get information from somebody that is hypothermic is problematic. A search and rescue member found the two men upstream. They too were stranded, as for the woman. She suffered an, an incredible bout of hypothermia. She'd been there for a long time had been wet, 
was in a spot where she couldn't get off the bank. It was collapsing underneath her. Commander Jared adds that this stretch of river, even on its good days, is not friendly. It looks like the river. It looks like all the other rivers, but it's not. That's a really dangerous stretch. Now take this creek just for an example. It's just a creek off of the Gallatin River, but if you look at the current, it's still just as strong. So while I am much safer where I'm standing here, take this current, put it there, much more dangerous. Big cottonwood trees, big rocks, nasty strainers. It's a really hazardous place. With waters like these, Jarrett says the three are extremely lucky. Water deserves respect, regardless of where you are. Importantly, Commander Jarrett says the trio is recovering. In Bozeman, Cody Boyer, MTN News. Now the search and rescue commander says none of the three people involved were wearing life jackets at that time. That was scary. We heard it kind of coming in and it wasn't far off of a river road in right. Norris there. Just a lot of personnel Things responding to it. Ugly so quickly. And the water is cold right now. That's so sure. a great reminder to be safe out there. Now in a case like this, one can serve as a reminder to be prepared when you do go out on the water. Water safety should be kept in mind from the tools you take with you to the clothes that you wear. Rental services like Big Boys Toys and Bozeman work to provide the resources for adventurers to have a good time while being safe. They, along with Gallatin County Search and Rescue, say the water this time of year is high, cold, and moving at dangerous speeds. Staff there say knowing where you are going and mapping out your course are important steps to staying ahead of the unknown. Also, knowing where the problem spots with rapids are in advance. That'll add to having the proper equipment is also important, including having insulated gear, even if it's warm out. The water and the wind together can make you colder than you think you're going to get, especially um, if the clouds take a turn and, and cover the sun, it can get chilly. So gear wise, especially in early season, making sure that you do have insulating layers just in case. Big Boy Toys also adds that having that life jacket can make all the difference, along with Rapids specific safety gear like helmets. Uh, in Mining City News this morning, police in Butte are investigating a case of vandalism at a residence involving graffiti with some racial slurs. The graffiti was written with spray paint on this home on Sunrise Lane on Saturday and involved derogatory statements about Native Americans. Police say this type of crime is not common in Butte. I uh, hate uh, directed graffiti. We don't get a whole lot of it at all. Um, again, we're investigating it still. We're going to investigate it. We're going to continue to investigate it. Uh, speak with the complainants to see if they have any idea who might have done it or anybody, if any of the neighbors have saw anything uh, that night. Now police suspect whoever painted the graffiti was directing it towards someone living in that home. And a victim in the March shooting incident near Evero in Missoula has died. That shooting also killed one man, critically wounded a Montana Highway Patrol trooper, and left another man a paraplegic. Shallon County, Washington coroner Wayne Harris confirmed Julie Blanchard died Monday afternoon in Wenatchee, Washington. Harris will now investigate Blanchard's cause of death. Julie Blanchard and her son Casey Blanchard and Shelly Hayes were all shot on March 14th off of Expressway Boulevard. The suspect later was arrested near Evero after the shooting trooper Wade Palmer. Now, Casey Blanchard returned home to Stevensville on Saturday from a Salt Lake City hospital. Trooper Wade Palmer came home last week. In other news, it's been a couple of days of hard work for the crew of Miss Montana as they make final preparations to be a part of the ceremonies, honoring one of the greatest military battles in history and honoring the veterans who served there. Miss Montana is poised to cross the English Channel today for a final parachute drop before the commemoration of the D-Day invasion coming up tomorrow. In between giving tours at the museum in Duxford, England, the crew and the paratroopers have been going through final training and preparation for the jump which will recreate an important part of the invasion of Normandy, which turned the tide of the war between the Allies and the Axis powers. At last word, it appeared Miss Montana was going to be among the 14 planes selected to be a part of the final formation that will drop paratroopers in view of President Trump and other dignitaries on the 6th. 6.38 here. We do have to take a quick break, but we have a very special guest coming up. This Saturday is going to be a fun one for Butte, folks in Butte. Steve Thompson, and there he is from NCAT, joins us live in the studio to talk about Sostenfest. He'll explain what all that means when we come back. But first, here's a look at what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning. Good morning to you ahead on CBS This Morning. Anthony Mason leads our coverage from Normandy of the 75th anniversary of D-Day. He'll speak with three veterans and show you how the invasion helped turn the tide of World War II. 
Plus, the controversy over facial recognition technology, an inside look at face reading cameras and why some say they actually violate your privacy. We'll see you 7 o'clock.